So this is number one from the 2018 AP Calc AB as well as the BC exam. Uh, it's a question that deals with a rate of change and it's one that we are allowed to use our calculator on. So if you get into it here, uh, people are entering a line for an escalator at a rate modeled by the function given by R. So R of T is defined as this crazy function and that holds from zero to 300. And then no more people are gonna be entering the line once T exceeds 300. Uh, tells us the units of R of T are people per second. T is being measured in seconds. People get on the escalator, and so they're exiting the line at a constant rate of 0.7 people per second. Uh, there are 20 people in line at the beginning of this time frame. Part A says how many people enter the line for the escalator during the time interval 0 to 300. So we don't need to take into account how many we began with. We don't need to take into account how many entered the escalator or exited the line. All we need to know is how many entered the line. So we're going to integrate the rate at which people are entering the line from 0 to 300, which is the time frame we are asked to utilize. If you think about the units here, R of T is measured in people per second. Uh, DT is measured in seconds, so if you analyze the dimensions, the seconds are going to cancel with each other. Our answer is going to be units of people. It's a calculator problem, so you can use your calculator's capability to evaluate that definite integral. And what you end up with is you end up with 270 people enter the line from time 0 to time 300. Part B tells us that during this time frame, 0 to 300, there are always people in line for the escalator. Uh, we basically need to know that so that we know that this is always working, right? If there was a time whenever there was no one in line, then people aren't exiting the line at that rate anymore. Uh, so that's really the only reason for that opening sentence there. How many people are in line at time 300? So we've already done a little bit of the work necessary to answer this question in part A. We know that 270 people enter the line from time zero to time 300. But if we wanna know how many people are actually in the line, we have to take into account how many people we started with. So we started with 20 people in the line. We add on how many people entered the line from zero to 300. But then we also have to subtract off how many people exited the line within that time frame. And so it's a 300 second stretch and people are constantly exiting the line at 0.7 people per second. So if you just take the product of 0.7 and 300, multiplying those together, the seconds cancel, this is gonna give you how many people exited the line from time zero to time 300, and that's 210 people. So when you add those together and subtract that off, you end up with 80 people in the line by time 300. Part C is going to kind of continue the little run-on sequence of calculations that we've got going on here. Uh, part C says, okay, time is now going to exceed 300 seconds. When's the first time that there's not going to be anyone in line for the escalator? So people are no longer entering the line once T exceeds 300. So basically what we need to recognize is that from Part B, 80 people are still in that line. And since no one else is entering the line, we just have to figure out how long it's gonna take those 80 people to get onto the escalator and exit the line. And so if we set 80 equal to 0.7 times X seconds, you can divide both sides of that by 0.7, what you end up with for X is you end up with 114.286. And that is measured in seconds, but here's the catch. It says, what is the first time T? Uh, T begins at zero, and we're considering time values above 300 right now. So this is how many seconds beyond 300 seconds it's going to take. So the value of T, whenever there's not going to be anyone left in line, is going to be this value tacked on to the 300, which is when no more people were entering the line. Uh, so that's going to end up being 414.286 seconds. The final part of this is asking us for when the number of people in the line is a minimum to so the nearest whole number, find the number of people in line at this time, and then as always, justify your answer. So since there is always gonna be a certain number of people in line, a positive number or zero, we are able to say that the function that represents the number of people in line is continuous. And therefore, we're guaranteed to get both a, a maximum and a minimum value for the number of people in line on the interval from 0 to 300. And so what counts for the justification in a situation like this is if you identify all the candidates where you might attain that maximum or minimum and then compare the number of 
in this case, people in line at each of those candidates, the smallest one is your minimum and the biggest one is your maximum. Uh, so endpoints of the closed interval are definitely candidates for both the minimum, which is what we want here, as well as the maximum. Uh, and then also anywhere where your derivative is equal to zero. Now this is kind of weird here. You, if you've done enough free response questions, you've probably encountered a question or two like this, but we have competing rates of change. We have the rate that people enter and the rate that people leave. So the net rate of change function is technically the derivative of the number of people waiting in line. And that net rate of change function is going to be the rate that people enter minus the rate that people leave. We need to know when that derivative is equal to zero. So what I did is I thought, well, you know, the calculator is in play here. I don't want to try to worry about trying to set this equal to 0.7 or anything like that. So what I did is I graphed R of T, I graphed 0.7, right? So I thought about adding this 0.7 to the other side, and I'm going to find the intersection of R of T and 0.7. And I did have to adjust my window settings a little bit. I changed my, my x-axis to range from 0 to 310, right? Just a little bit above the, the value of uh, T that we wanted to top out at. And then I changed my y values. Well, I knew I needed to see y value of, of 0.7. That's where this constant line is, is graphed across the coordinate plane there. And then I just kind of picked three, and I was lucky enough to see a pretty good graph. So I found these two intersections. I found the intersection here uh, of R of t and 0.7, and I found the intersection here. I, I took all of the accuracy that the calculator provided me with for the X coordinates of those intersections and, and those X coordinates are technically T values here. Um, I, I labeled this as the constant value A and I labeled this as the constant value B and then what I went ahead and did and I, I, I basically did what I said a few minutes ago. These are the only places where the minimum can occur. I need to know what the number of people in line at each of these times is. So I already knew it at time zero is 20. They gave us that. We already computed in part A that at time 300, we've got 80 people in line. And then I'm going to do a couple of calculations very similar to what we did in part A to figure out this number uh, with the value of A and also the value of B. And so I evaluated on the calculator for this. It was like 3.8. It, it, I rounded it off because it does say to the nearest whole number, find the number of people. So it's fine to round that off. Usually if, if you're in a situation where you're accepting decimals, you need three digits of accuracy with an answer like this. But we get to kind of bail out a little here because it's asking for the nearest whole number of people. Similarly, I, I went and evaluated the same expression with B going here and also going here. And again, that's just the same calculation that we did in part A. So if you want to go back and see the calculator input or hear me talk about why we're doing that calculation, or excuse me, that's not part A, that's part B. Uh, hear me talk about why we're doing that calculation. You can kind of pause the video or go back and, and check it out a little bit more. Uh, but the minimum is, is clearly four. Uh, and that minimum happens at this time. So the minimum happens at this time when there are about four people in line. And that is number one from 2018.